right, so uh, for a home, I'm going to talk about how I set up the SketchUp model. Um, and I should say SketchUp models because I create two individual models. Uh, the one that's on the screen right now is just the home. Uh, and it has various scenes for um, set up for drawings that I export specifically out of this model alone, which are in this case all the elevations. You can see they'll rotate around. Um, each elevation I set up with a background of white, I set the fog enough that you can get the perception of depth as well as shadow set and obviously in 2D mode. Um, set these up for every single elevation throughout the home. This one has, actually has a hidden elevation so it'll cut a section which will take away the garage so you can see that wall at this location. Um, uh, and again, all the way around the house. Uh, what I love about SketchUp, obviously, is you can get all those oblique angles on homes that have angles. This one, in this case, does not. Um, so it only has, I believe, five elevations. In this file, I also set up all of the floor plans. Um, you can see as it rotates around, there's the second floor plan. And excuse the order, I was doing this project kind of fast. Um, there's the roof plan first floor plan. Um, and in this case, I've set up one that is garage plan, you'll see, because the house is rather large um, and it has some different elevation changes. So in order to capture the section, in order for it to work because of the different elevation changes, I need to set up a separate plan for the garage because it sits about three feet lower than the rest of the home. The other file that I set up is the site, and this is the home on the site. Um, you'll notice in every one of my files, I do set up one tab, which is working model, which keeps the model very simplistic so that it can work in it quickly and rotate around. Um, in this one, um, this is a project in the works. I would actually take out all these plantings as well. I was in the process of preparing some renderings for a presentation, and so I haven't yet taken those out of the working model file. But in this file, I set up different scenes. Um, for doing renderings and for uh, my construction documents, I always include several sheets of perspectives that are just views of the home on the site rotated all the way around. Uh, so you get a good idea during construction of what you're looking at. Um, then the obvious plans that I do generate from the site are, of course, the site plans. And so there'll be one where I set it up as the site plan only. This shuts off all of the trees, looks down at the roof. Doesn't have any of the meets and bounds or any of that information. Those are actually stored on layers that I shut off because I do those graphically in layout. Um, as an example, I will click on the property line and you'll see the property lines click on so that I have them there. So in layout, I can actually draw to those lines um, or copy. And usually what I do is I will copy those lines directly out of SketchUp bring them into layout, and then re uh, vector render those. I also keep one which is a site plan, no roof. Um, and the purpose of that is for grading plans and landscape plans when I need to identify grading or, or planters that are right up against the building footprint. So then if I jump to the layout file, this is actually the floor plan file. Uh, it's a rather large house, so I do a set of key plans. And this, these are drawings that are in the works, so they're not finished. Um, they don't have all the information as to how it's keyed to the other plans yet, but it gives you an idea of showing the overall floor plan and then the overall roof plan. And then over here I have obviously the different sheets. Um, with A2.1, this is now showing that um, garage floor plan only because of the elevation change up above. And so then it shows the basic grid lines that I've set up as well as the dimensions. Um, I'll show you how I get the graphics to work in a minute. Uh, this is the main floor plan again showing all the grid lines, dimensions, um, as well as all the window designations and so forth. I'll just walk through each plan. This is the upper floor plan, this is the partial roof plan, and the other roof plan. Now one of the things that I do in layout 
to really help things speed up because it's always been an issue um, that I've heard complaints is how long it takes to render is I only vector render line work. So if you look over in my layers, I actually have a layer called plan line work. Um, and then I have one called the SketchUp model, which is on the bottom. Uh, because the way layout works is whatever layers on the bottom is the furthest one back. I like to have the base model all the way back. Then everything else sits on top of it. The plan line work is actually line work taken out of the SketchUp model. And I'll highlight it right there. Um, and that is... I'd use two methods. You can do it where it is a saved scene. A lot of times to save time, I just copy and paste it directly out of the model because it goes so fast. This work you can vector render because it is really fast. Um, I'll try and do one here. Um, I'll delete that layer comp or delete that line work, and I will go back into the model. And I go into the first floor plan because that is the plan we were looking at before. The line works actually there, but you don't see it because of the section cut. So if I shut off that section cut, and then I go on to my layers, first let fuller line work is off. I'm going to click that on so I can see it. I can actually just pick it, and to make sure I've got it, you can double check because of course you should be saving all of your groups on a layer name, and that says first floor line work. And then I just hit Edit, Copy. I go back into um, Layout. I make sure I'm on that layer plan line work so it comes in on the right layer. And then I hit Paste. And it brings in all the line work. Now all you have to do is you go over to my SketchUp model. Sorry. On View. I choose the scale I want, which in this case is quarter inch. I go over to select vector render, and you'll see it goes instantaneously. And then I pick a point to insert, which in this case I'll pick this outer wall, which is, I just know it as, I believe, the kitchen. So it'll be this corner here, and you'll see it'll drop right onto that point. I'll zoom up so you get a good look. And make sure it's lined up and then you just extend the bounding box to the limits of the plan a lot of times I'll do it just to the limits of my title block so I know I don't miss anything in all four directions then you can hit render and then I can adjust. You can see here I have a break line, so I will adjust it to the break line so nothing shows past that. Just zoom up to make sure nothing else is shown, and then I hit render to eliminate those lines. And then you have a composition which has both the raster image from the SketchUp model, which is nice because it shows all the fog, shade, shadow, materials, but then you also have a crisp vector line that matches the model exactly because it's all derived from the SketchUp model, the line work. Let's see throughout, there's never an issue. This also helps with dimensioning. I've noticed people have had some comments about how you dimension and sometimes you pick up different lines within the model. And a lot of my models get very detailed, so I'll have base trim and sometimes it'll pick up that line and not get a, a five and a half inch stud. It might add three quarters of an inch to it. Um, having the line works nice because if you want to dimension and get it absolutely accurate to just studs, you can go in to um, change the visibility, take off the visibility of the SketchUp model, and then you can just dimension directly. Doing a no-no here, I should put the dimension layer on. Um, you can dimension specifically just to those items, and then it's very quick and easy, very simple to get accurate dimensions. And I try to keep all my models with very simple dimensions. Um, so that we know it can be built easily. And so you'll see throughout here a lot of these dimensions will come up on simple dimensions. That one came up with a five and a half because it's eight foot from one face of a stud to another. But it makes the process of dimensioning much simpler. Um, you can, if you're doing to center lines, you can pinpoint center lines easier or openings or any size. It works really fast.
Now the way I produce that line work is I don't draw it at all in layout. In layout, I only lines that I'm drawing in layout are things like grid lines. A lot of those I keep in scrapbooks, which I'll go over in a minute. But um, most of my line work is all derived out of the SketchUp model. And the way that mo uh, information is generated, I can show by going into my working model. And I will put on the section planes. And so they're all generated from different section planes all of the line work. And so you can see as an example there's a section through the upper floor. And the way you do that is you create your section um, and I'll do a sample one real fast. So it, I'll go to Tools, Section Plane, I'll pin it on a flat line, move it up Sorry grabbing the wrong one. As an example, we'll try and capture the second floor. And then all you do at that point is you do a create a group from slice. I know there is some other add-on software that probably does this much easier. Now there's basically a group in there, if I go back to working model, that's been created and you can see it highlighted. and it keeps it highlighted so it's nice at that point to actually take that and assign it a layer ahead of time and I keep those on my if I go to my layers I label those as line work so I've got first floor line work I've got even roof line work um, for my structural engineer likes to have simple line work um, second floor line work so I will assign it I'm going to show that second floor line work because that's the old line work that I had before, but I'll assign this one that layer as well um, by going into the entity info. This is down at the bottom. Let me pull it up so you can see it better and then just assign it that second floor line work layer. Reason for doing that is sometimes it's hard to select that simple line work um, and easier to do if you shut things off around it. So in this case I'm going to shut off the section planes because they make it a little hard to see. But then what I do is I go in and I you can see here I'm going to have trouble selecting that. I've got it there. I edit that group. And what it does is it creates that as a component. If you have multiple components, I will usually do this crossover because you can see I'm picking up seven different components. I will make them a single component. And I'll show you why I do this and I don't worry about the name on this case. Blasphemy, I know. So it's going to create this group or this component. I think it's doing an autosave. Yes. So now I've got this component in the group. What I like to do, and this is just personal preference, is I like to then copy that component where I can see it. So now I have two instances of that component. And then I can go in and simply edit that component, which of course edits the one below. So here, this, this component or part of this component is a roof area that I don't really need to see in the floor plan, so I'll just delete it. Uh, likewise, this is an upper roof. I don't need to see it either. Likewise, that is another lower roof. I don't need to see that. But the basic concept, and I won't go through the whole thing, is you look at your, your wall and your section here and, your, and how this thing is going to work for a plan, and you decide which line work you want to go through. I think, you know, architecturally, it's nice for all of that to be very simple. So I do take off a lot of the trim. Um, in this case... I'm within this component. What I like to do is again left to right to highlight everything within it and I will explode it. And I'll keep exploding because there's multiple components in here. Um, and just knowing what I want to explode. In this case I do not want to explode the doors. But then I will go in here and I will start to close in my line work. Am I not in?
Oh, because that's part of the component. That line needs to be drawn as well as that line. So these components, these are actually door and window components. I usually just take the trim off. That's why that one wasn't closing. I leave the doors on and I'll finish these out like this. And you'll see eventually you'll get a nice plan that's all closed in. So, let me zoom back out. Um, I'm going to just close this wall off just to show one section real quick. So what I'll do eventually, you know, is I'll, I'll take off that extraneous information. I'll leave the doors and windows where they are, but I'll take out all the extra stuff that the section has picked up. Like in this case, this is a stair, and it's picked up every picket. So I'll make sure those are all gone. And then I will go in and I will assign um, a color to that wall. And so you can pick any color you want, and they all transfer really well to um, layout and then you end up with a simple line work that you then bring into layout. Now you can also set this up if you wanted to um, as a specific scene that's just line work only and you isolate that line work. Um, I am doing that in other projects right now just so I can isolate the line work to copy it and place it in, but you could also set it up as a scene that you then overlay and render without a background on top of your um, floor plan. And so what I would do is that method I showed you copy paste it in. In the other case this would actually be a legitimate scene from SketchUp and then you just have to re-render it each time you edit it. It seems like it's cumbersome, but typically, for instance, a plan like this only takes me about 15 minutes to go around and edit the whole thing to have the plan set up. Uh, and then you make changes as you go through, but it, it, what's nice is it keeps that line work. The other thing that's really advantageous is this is the only element that I then export as an AutoCAD file for my consultants, which they really appreciate because then all they get is a simple line drawing of just the plan. Now I'll do it in two forms. I will export it as a DXF or DWG out of layout so they actually have how it lays out on the sheet. But then I'll actually, from the one that they mainly use, is I'll just export all of the line work and isolate it. Um, as an example, I can open up a SketchUp file that I have, which I keep, and you'll see where line work for structural is what I call it. And this is a very simple SketchUp file based on that model, same model, and all it is is line work. And that's what I export. It gives them a very small file but gives them every bit of information that they need to coordinate their work with mine. And then anytime I make changes I just update those files and send them back out to the consultant. So that's the basics of a floor plan.